If you haven't discovered already, professors are obsessed with referencing. It is so important that people have lost their careers as a result of failing to do it. This video won't be able to cover the details of all of the referencing systems that you may be asked to use, but will focus on the concepts of referencing that is common to them all. Please remember that the final authority on referencing is always your professor. If you have any questions, talk first to the TA and then the prof to make sure that you are doing it in the correct manner. Regardless, there are two basic parts to most referencing systems. In this video, I'm going to talk about the citation and the list source. In general, the citation identifies the transition in your writing from your own thoughts to the thoughts of someone else. In most referencing systems, the citation is a parenthesis or a number and occurs in the text of your essay. The second part, the list of sources, allows the professor to be able to find the original source that you used. This usually occurs at the end of your essay. Most of the differences between different referencing systems has to do with the formatting of these two parts. But keep in mind, not all referencing systems use the exact phrases that I've used here. Most students have the most trouble with the citation, so let's look at that one first. A citation is like a flag. You plant it into your essay when you leave your thinking and start to use someone else's ideas. Notice that I'm saying ideas, not just words. Many students mistakenly think that they only need to reference words. This is in fact wrong. You have to reference the thought that the words convey. In fact, most referencing systems distinguish between a thought citation and a property citation. This distinction is a bit arbitrary, but helps you understand the intent of referencing. A thought citation is when you use an idea or thought of someone else, but don't directly quote them. Remember, professors are grading you on your thinking. In order to do that, they need to know the difference between the parts of your essay that are your thinking and the parts that are someone else's. This is where you use the citation. The thought citation is one of the most popular and common of all of the citations. Here's an example of one. When using a thought citation, it is very important to clearly identify which thoughts are yours and which are not by the appropriate placement of the citation flag. In this example, the placement of the citation at the end of the sentence implies that everything that precedes it is someone else's thought, in this case, Myers. However, if there's a bit of you in there, that is, some of your own thoughts and ideas, not found in the original author, then you have made a citation error. To correct this, move the citation to here to indicate that the first part of the sentence is from Myers, but the rest is your idea. If you are summarizing extensively from another source, it's a temptation to put only one citation at the end of the paragraph. This is almost always a mistake. To properly cite this paragraph, you must insert as many citation flags into sentences as there are people's ideas in the paragraph. This may mean that every sentence needs a reference citation. If the entire paragraph is somebody else's idea, you're probably not including enough critical analysis in your paper. You might want to go back to the research and thinking phases of writing. A property citation is when you use someone else's creative property. The most obvious example of this is when you use a quote. A quote is not only referencing somebody else's thinking, but also their intellectual property, that is, the exact way that they phrased it. Most referencing systems require that you take an extra step when using someone else's intellectual property. In this example, the page number needs to be indicated and quotation marks are used. However, there are other kinds of property citations in addition to quotations. For example, an image. If you were to take a picture of the Edward Carey Fox statue in the Arts Quad, that picture is yours because of the expenditure of time and energy for you to take the shot and process the picture. If someone else were to use that picture, they have used your personal creative property without your permission. The same happens in essays. If you use a picture, a graph, or a chart that someone else created, that is their property, and you need to take the extra property citation step to make that clear. This failure to distinguish ownership leads to one of the most common problems in referencing, and that is the issue of public knowledge. Some students don't feel that they need to cite information found on the internet because it's public. 
much like the statue in the quad is public. But it isn't about access, it's about ownership. International copyright law says that the attribution for creation always remains with the creator. To go back to the photography example, even though the physical picture is now in the hands of the friend, this doesn't mean that the friend can claim that this is his creative property. This applies to everything that you might use from the internet, including pictures. They may be free, but you still have to cite. Keep in mind, anything that is not cited is not only assumed to be your own idea, it is assumed to be your own creation as well. The next video will address issues of scholarly referencing.